Thank you for joining us today for the second episode in our series, Law in Life. I would like to start by acknowledging the dark and young people, the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Today we will be talking about what you need to know or should be thinking about if you are looking to join a board or a committee. I am Anna Cruikshank, the Managing Director of Aubrey Brown Lawyers. I am also the Vice President of the Gosford Erina Business Chamber, the Deputy Chair of the Central Coast Regional Development Corporation and the Secretary of the Central Coast UDIA. I'm also an accredited company director with the AICD. I'm joined by our panel who represents a wealth of experience across a whole range of boards. Firstly, I'd like to introduce Matthew Lusted. Matthew has been on many boards and committees um, over several years and is currently the president of the Wyong Business Chamber, as well as the treasurer of the Wyong Christian School. Matthew's experience includes being on the steering committee that set up the local branch of the Bendigo Bank, as well as sitting on boards and committees in the political world and several other volunteer organisations. Thank you for joining us, Matthew. It's great to have you here today. Welcome. I'd also like to introduce Gabby Bowles. Gabby is currently on the board of the Gosford Erina Business Chamber and she has held several positions throughout the several years as well, including government positions on council, sitting on government boards, on volunteer boards and sporting association boards, as well as not-for-profit boards. So Gabby, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Anna. And finally, I would like to introduce Darren Butcher. Darren has been heavily involved with the Camwell Warnervale Soccer Club, starting as a young, enthusiastic soccer player, but um, also working um, with their committee in several different positions over the years and has been very heavily involved in the development of that club. And Gar Darren is also a director of the Wyong Race Club. So thank you, Darren. It's lovely to have you here. It's a pleasure. And I know that all of you have so much experience and so much to share in relation to what we should be thinking about if we are looking at either putting ourselves forward to join a board or committee, or alternatively, we've been approached and we've been asked to join. So I'd like to start by asking you, what do you think people should be thinking about when they're looking at joining a board or committee? Matthew, what do you think they should be thinking about? Oh, really, what, what they plan to achieve and whether that's the right organisation for them to achieve it, because it might not be. Uh, you, you often see people join uh, organisations and they only last maybe one term or drop out during it, and um, they just haven't had their settings right. Mm. Um, so they might want to achieve it through a different organisation or through their own efforts. So they really need to question about, is this the right organisation, the right alignment? Um, to actually achieve what they're, they're looking to achieve and making sure it's aligned with the organisation itself mm. so you're not trying to push it in such a direction that you're, there's conflict on the board. Mm. Mm. Gabby, what has motivated you to take on the board positions and committee positions you've taken on in the past? Good question. I think growing up in a family that was heavily involved in, in different committees, um, you know, at times local action groups or sporting groups and things. Um, I was just brought up in an environment where, um, you know, there was a strong focus on what you could contribute back to your community or, or different organisations. And um, I think that's probably what started motivating me to get involved was, you know, if I felt something perhaps wasn't functioning as efficiently as it could do and, and I had ideas and opinions about that, well, what was I going to do about it, you know? Mm. And then, like Matthew said, is making sure that that alignment was right. So I wasn't pushing a personal agenda. It was, mm. you know, about um, achieving outcomes that were consistent with the organisation in an effort to improve things. Mm. And Darren, yes, what, what's been your motivating factor? Oh, I think uh, it's like fishes and loaves. You've got to give uh, to get anything in the world. And I think that um, if you want to see a, a community be as successful as what it possibly can be, um, I think you've got to give to that community before you expect to get anything in return. And I think uh, the way the business world is these days, it's all about take, take, take. Um, and I think that if you want you and your staff and all the rest of it in your own environment to go well, 
you've actually got to be showing them that you're you want to be part of something bigger and uh, and set a, a higher agenda and the organisations that you go into to be involved in that uh, that you want to see them grow or be in a better level um, but not necessarily just you know as as both of them have said don't go in with an agenda for yourself go in for an agenda mm. for the community and uh, make it better to a better place to live really mm. and what questions would you suggest people should be asking before they look to join a board or a committee I, th I think from my uh, my perspective is probably maybe different to these guys um, it could be the same um, but it was something that I was passionate about with the horse racing side of it. It was something I was very passionate about in many different fields. So, you know, I was an owner and, you know, I also was, uh, you know, in syndications and, and all the other stuff that, that comes along. And, and I knew trainers and, and I just wanted to see the environment be better. And um, every time I went to different tracks, I'd go, oh, wow, that'd be good at our track. And, and so I wanted to see it be, be better. And I thought, well, I, I got asked, uh, would I be interested? And I thought, well, I'll have a look at it. And I didn't know anything about boards. And, and mm -hmm. so that's a really good question. And so I started to explore what, what's necessary of a board member. And I think my early ideas was that I was going to be instigating change and, and making things different and all the rest of it. But then I started to learn a lot more about compliance and what's needed behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And, and um, that was really, really good for me as a person too. I grew so much as a person. So. Um, I hope that answers the question. Mm. But from a committee point of view, from a, a soccer club point, uh, point, I was a young person, I was 15 when I first got mm. in as vice president of the club, just wanting to see things go forward and, and be adapted. And I was very hands-on as a committee member. Um, mm. And as later years, now being vice president, I'm, I'm more um, backwards and, and steering a direction. Mm. Um, and still, you've got to be a lot more hands-on as a committee member than a board member, um, mm. but different ways. I think that you show there that there is a um, can be a big difference between different boards and committees and what's expected of the directors. I've certainly been involved in boards who would describe themselves as working boards mm -hmm. and that is that as a director you're expected to show up and you're expected to employ your professional mm -hmm. skills perhaps but also other skills that you can bring to the table. But then I've also been involved with boards that are probably in a very strict corporate sense, a more true representation of a board where it's very much the board is there to be strategic focused yep. and there are employees in the organisation who actually do the day to day. Yep. So Gabby, when you've been approached to be a board member, what questions have you asked before deciding to accept the position? Look, to be fair, I think my, my first board position, I probably went in a little bit blind, mm. which was a sharp learning curve. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, it was almost almost 10 years ago and I had committee experience, but like Darren says, you know, particularly with sporting clubs, when you're involved in those, it's very hands-on. Mm. Um, and so a lot of your function is, is more in, you know, helping a volunteer organisation actually, you know, get through its its core day-to-day -day functions. Yeah. Um, whereas my first um, proper board position on a not-for-profit, um, I, I guess the first thing for me was deciding whether or not I felt I could add value based mm. on the organisation, what its objectives were and what it was setting out mm. to achieve. Um, and probably, you know, the learnings that I took from that experience, there's a few more questions I'd ask moving forward wanting to understand the organisation's challenges mm -hmm. and whether or not there's an appetite to navigate those in an effort to improve or not. Because mm -hmm. some boards, um, just, just the way that they are, aren't as, um, aren't as open to change. And for me personally, mm -hmm. I, I, like to, I like continual improvement, mm -hmm. you know, constantly looking at, at how things can be improved on. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably, that's probably the, would be the first question mm -hmm. I'd want to know moving forward. Mm -hmm. And Matt, have you got anything to add? Well, similar on the questions that uh, Gabby mentioned, um, you really only get one opportunity. So mm. if you're being approached to go on, onto a board, um, you need you just to take stock and actually ask the questions firstly about what they see in you, what are your qualities, mm. why are they seeking you out, what do they want to achieve, um, what's the purposes of the board, what's expected. Mm. So it, this is the only time to really ask all those questions because once you're actually on the board, you just say, oh, that sounds good, and, and you get mm. on, you're then a part of the board, and you don't have the time to ask mm. those questions about why you're there. You mm. are there, and you're suddenly, um, yeah, whatever the board is or functions mm. or how it's been, you're, you're, you're potentially a part of the problem. 
So <laughs> take time, take stock, ask the questions, um, and then make a considered approach rather than jumping in. Mm. Yeah. I agree. One of the lessons I've learned over the years with um, different boards and committees I've joined is to ask, why do you want me? Why are you approaching me? Because sometimes their expectation of your contribution might be something greater than what you're in a position to give at that point in time. And as a lawyer, um, you know, there is a, a preparedness to steer the board around legal issues, but there's also a line of I'm not here and able to just free be service. a yeah. free um, legal service 24-7. I have also um, learnt, and certainly in doing the company director's course, that um, looking at their financial statements, looking at minutes of meetings to have a look at what issues are actually um, being brought up and addressed. Are they making good decisions? Are they keeping good records? Can they actually give me minutes and do the minutes um, properly reflect what I'd expect to mm. see in them? Um, and also also looking at their governance documents because both you and I, um, Matthew, have been involved in Bendigo Bank boards at different times and I didn't appreciate going into that that it was actually governed by a franchising document. Mm. So there were a whole lot of regulations the board members needed to understand um, in relation to the rules and then you also had the overlay of the banking regulations that made that a very interesting and unique board to be involved in. And again, um, looking at constitutions, looking at are there particular laws that apply to the um, environment the board's operating in, and that would be with the race club, one of the things mm. that you guys would yeah. be looking at, the Registered Clubs Act and different things like that. Mm. Um, what associations might have an overview over what the board does? I think um, it's also useful to ask if you can attend a board meeting as an observer, and you might be asked to sign a confidentiality agreement before you do that, but just so you can look at the board in action and think, am I a cultural fit for this board? A lot of personalities on boards, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I think People. understanding the, um, some organisations have different funding models. Like mm, I know in my experience right. with not-for-profit, a lot of the funding streams that came through was subject to government tender, so they weren't guaranteed beyond a certain period. Understanding mm. that and how it impacts mm the functions of an organisation, that was certainly something that I learnt mm. a lot about because it changes your decision making. Mm. So Matthew, what makes a good board member? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, one's there to actually serve the aims and aspirations of what the board or the, or the, or the organisation actually is, rather than being self-interested. Um, and um, one that's going to participate. Mm. Um, Generally, I think most of the boards I've actually been on, it's probably about 40% of the board that, that actually do most of the work, mm -hmm. and I'm probably being generous there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and um, numbers on the boards, of, you might get into it later on, but um, basically having sometimes more than seven mm -hmm. can cause complications. You, your boards can actually split and, and can come into different groups themselves. So you have to be very wary about that. But um, I think a good board member is a is a contributor, um, and uh, one is actually standing for the values of what the organisation mm. is. Mm. Mm. Darren, what have you observed to be the traits of a good board member? I think uh, you've got to go in with the right positive attitude. Um, I think uh, and be open to other people's ideas. I'm very passionate, so it blocks a lot of my. Um, open eye, like listening to other people about what their ideas if, if I feel that there's certain a category that needs to go that way. Um, so that's something that I've learned to sit back and go, okay, well, let's have a look and see where they, how this, this plays out. Mm. And, uh, and, you know, then if it doesn't go down that line, then I've got the second option that might be able to help them. So, but um, just being able to see people's strengths and go, wow, I really admire that strength and look at everyone as their own unique person and what they can add. And, and then um, if there is a project or something you're heading down the lines of, that you look to that person and say, well, you are the strongest in this field. Can you lead mm. us in this direction? And, and uh, what is it that I can contribute? And I think presence is the other thing. Mm. I think uh, any board that actually doesn't have the whole board present 
most of the time and it's impossible all the time especially mm -hmm. covids and all the other things that go on but i think a board can be present most most of the time and that's that's when you know you're moving together mm -hmm. i think that's when you've got a good board showing mm -hmm. up yep mm -hmm. so gabby have you had any um experiences on boards where there have been difficulties that have had to be overcome? Yeah, I certainly have. Um, I've never been accused of being a, a small personality, which doesn't always help. Um, and yeah, look, I've found when you're on a board or a committee for a cause um, where there's quite a strong, um, I guess, uh, social value attached to it, it's, it's quite a philanthropic organisation. Um, people can get very passionate about things and, and a little bit what Darren alluded to, you know, tunnel vision or there's one way, this is, mm. this is the good idea, yeah. let's go to it. Which is, I mean, from those experiences, I've learnt to reflect on my own behaviour and my own contributions when, when things are challenging. You know, we've always got an opportunity to reflect on how we behave in those situations mm. in an effort to improve. It comes back to mm. that continuous improvement, making sure that... I listen, you know, because a difference mm. of opinion isn't always a bad thing. It's an opportunity to learn and to, and to grow. doesn't mean you'll agree. Mm. Um, and being able to park emotion because, you know, some of, some of the different boards and things, you know, there can be quite strong emotional connections to the cause and to the objectives that are mm. being sought to be achieved. Actually being able to park that and think critically and objectively about things and respect the fact that, you know, when you are going to have differences of opinions, people won't always, you know, be them, their best mm -hmm. self when, mm -hmm. when they're expressing those things. It's important to reflect on how you contribute to that in order to come to a common ground or, or an understanding mm -hmm. and, and respect others despite differences of opinions. Mm. And I think that a strong chair or um, president mm. can really contribute to overcoming those things. And in my experience, there are a couple of other things. Um, sometimes board members stay on the board too long mm. and um, having a um, turnover of board members, board members understanding that perhaps they're there for a period for a purpose and that's their highest and best contribution. And also groupthink, where you sit on a board and everybody just nods because mm. you've got a couple of strong personalities who dominate the board um, is another thing t that I think board members need to be aware of. So one of the things that we don't necessarily think about when we join a board is the legal liability that comes with being a board member. Even if we're on a volunteer board or a volunteer committee, we have legal liabilities under the Corporations Act, including to understand the financial position of the organisation, um, saying he's the accountant, that's his role, doesn't mm. protect you if there are financial problems um, and Central Case Council has suffered from that, I think, um, over recent times. Avoiding conflicts of interest um, is a big one for boards, even volunteer boards. Um, if a board is insolvently trading, a lot of people don't realise that even if they're a volunteer, they are personally liable for the debts that the board incurs when it can't, doesn't have the money to pay them. Um, and another big one for directors on boards is that they actually have personal liability if superannuation isn't being paid, if certain taxes aren't being paid, even if you're on a volunteer board. So it's really important that as a director, you are getting the right information to be comfortable that you're meeting um, those obligations. So what can board members do to be comfortable that they're meeting their legal obligations? What do you guys do as board members? Matthew? Mm. Um, effectively, it depends on the board that you're, you're actually at. If you're at a, a working level board um, and a smaller board, or are you in an organisation where you have a, a reporting CEO, um, it can be a little bit different on the information that you actually receive. So whether it's a volunteer treasurer or it's coming through like a CEO position. So um, yeah, I think you covered it pretty well. There, there are certain things that you actually want to see that you're meeting mm. your obligations. Um, I just use just standard business, business principles. Basically, have we got the cash that's there? Mm. Uh, have we met our obligations? And I just want to see a checklist of those functions that yes, we are meeting them mm. um, and going through. And 
um, you'd have to go through each individual finance of every department on mm. every month, um, but certainly a CEO in presenting those sort of documentations to a board of governance uh, needs to be assured that those things are being met. Mm. Yeah. Darren, with the race club, what do you expect to see to be comfortable that your liabilities protected? Yeah, well, we've got our board notes that, that come through and, and the CEO is very thorough with what he's actually presenting to us. If there's anything that I see that uh, that I think is a question mark or being relatively new, only a couple of years into it, uh, if there's a uh, something that just uh, an acronym or a term that doesn't sit um, with me, mm. I ask more about it. Mm. I, um, I ask for uh, more in-depth information on certain categories if I don't see the answer that I'm after. And, uh, I, you know, lucky being in business that, um, you know, I've got a pretty simple theory, income minus expense equal bank balance, and I want to make sure that, that that's right as well. Mm. Um, so that the governance is being checked, but also too, as Matt said, at the end of the day, um, we're way above the, the bottom line and, and mm. looking that if we're going to set projects and things like that, that we've got plenty that's uh, sitting in there to, to be able to pay for it. Mm. So that's, that's not being embarrassed to ask the questions. That's well, I think you, you have to. Mm. You yeah. see a lot of people on boards yep. that if you actually direct a question, mm. even though we're all nodding and et cetera, and just say, what is that acronym? Uh, what's your mm. understanding of it? They don't know. Mm. And I've seen it so many times. You've, mm. You know, you're there as an organisation, you're there to learn as well, uh, and there for governance, but you've got to ask the difficult questions. Yep. Because mm. I, I've done that many mm. a time. Um, I point out the elephant in the room, but so many people come up after and say, oh, thanks, I didn't know what that mm. meant. Yep. Mm. And yeah. There's and a lot of people embarrassed by that, isn't yeah. there? Sorry, Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I think that um, board members being able to accept being questioned by the others on the board and not taking it personally yep. is um, something that's important. But other things that um, you can do as a board member, make sure the insurances are in place. Even mm. at a grassroots level, there needs to be public liability insurance. There should be director's insurance because the organisation can take out insurance to protect directors from um, certain types of liability. Making sure that there is good communication and record keeping, um, I think, is another way to protect yourself. Um, and training, making sure that you're looking at your skills to sit on the board. ASIC has a lot of information for board um, members about their obligations and liabilities. So does the Department of Fair Trading for committee members um, on um, volunteer associations and the Australian Institute of Company Director courses, and I know that you've done one, um, Gabby, they are really, really good if you're looking at elevating your skills to the next level. On that, Anna, it, there's, there are also grants available. So I was on a, on a volunteer board and I was lucky enough that um, a grant opportunity came up. So, you know, where you're on a board where, you know, you, you're not necessarily paid for your, for your time and your contribution. Some of those courses can be expensive, but I don't think that should deter people. There's mm -hmm. other ways that you can get professional development and mm -hmm. training and, and have that supported with a grant. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Gabby. So, Darren, what is your key takeaway for people today who are thinking about joining a board? I, I think research. I, I think um, it, like your example of going to the board meeting, I didn't know that it was actually a thing that you could go and you know go and watch it. So that was an interesting one. But um, I think go and just experience it. And um, I, I'd be very for people going to boards. I've only had a great experience with mine, so I, I can only be for it. But I would uh, make sure I got board papers for the last 12 months so you can read through, see if there's any conflict, see if there's anything that's mm. there that might be um, a red flag for you. I think uh, you do look at the personalities. The only thing that I see diff <coughs> excuse, excuse me, the one, only thing I see slightly different is that um, boards do change all the time mm. and you could go in with a dynamic that really suits you and you, you know it's progressive. A couple of members can change and, and that can alter things and, and uh, I haven't experienced that yet but I think it could. Mm. Um, I've only seen it go up mm. and up. Um, so the, the takeaway would be just do your research first and, and probably pop into a meeting and see how you fit and you feel and the gut feel of it. Thanks Darren. Gabby, what's your key takeaway? Um, I'd certainly be wanting to understand the organisation and, and what's expected of a board member and also the time commitment because mm. um, a lot of people mm. can like the idea of it but understanding the time commitment and being prepared to actually apply yourself to that um, I think that's very important. I agree. Mm. Matthew? Um, manage your expectations. 
on, on what it is. Um, and probably a key one is hold on to it lightly. Mm. Uh, a lot of these organisations that we belong to, we're, we're basically guardians there, mm. for, for a, uh, or custodians there, mm. for a, a small period of time. So I've seen um, the opposite of that effect, where um, people just hold on to the positions for too long and have lost the direction on why they're there. Mm. Um, and you can kill an organisation, so hold on to it lightly. There are times where it's time to put up the hand and allow um, you know, some fresh air to come through. Mm. I agree. And for me, um, my key takeaway is what value can I add and what can I do to leave this organisation in a better place than what it was when I um, came to the board or the committee. So I would like to thank you all for your contribution today. It's been a really interesting discussion and I hope that it's been valuable for the um, people who are watching. The next episode of our Law in Life series will talk about the challenges with buying and selling property in 2022. We hope that you can join us for that and please share with your friends and family on social media. Thank you. Mm -hmm.